Welcome to this week's edition of Outdoors Online, a weekly webcast produced by the North Dakota Game and Fish Department. I'm your host, Mike Anderson. My guest this week is upland game biologist Jesse Kohler. Today we're going to talk about the upcoming grouse seasons and the Hungarian partridge season. Jesse, first of all, how do you come up with your numbers? Well, we do surveys throughout the year. Right now we're just finishing our brood surveys where we drive 20 mile stretches on, on roadsides and we count all the, all the pheasant, partridge, grouse, and wild turkeys that we see and also record the number of young per, per adult female, so per hen. So this is the time of year you guys are tallying numbers. Let's talk about sharp tail numbers. How are the numbers looking? Uh, the, the spring census, we had an increase in our sharp tail numbers so far. So we were up 6%, which is pretty much the same as last year. Uh, however, we're still down about 50% from where we were in 2015. So we're still below where we'd want to see our grouse numbers, but they are starting to rebound. 2017 drought year is when our, our upland birds in general, grouse, partridge, and pheasants dropped. Uh, after that drought, 2018 obviously, we came into the year with very low vegetative cover. So this spring, 2019, is the first year in three years that we had good substantial residual cover from the previous year and, and good early nesting conditions. Uh, so we're hoping that this, this coming year will be the start to our rebound. Um, upland populations can rebound in as, as little as three years and up to five, five to ten years if we get severe win winters. So hopefully we'll start to see increasing numbers within the next few years. Jesse, are there better parts of the state than others for sharp-tailed grouse? Yeah, the west half of the state has always been the highest, highest sharp-tailed density that we have. Um, the Badlands used to be some of the better stuff, but this year the Badlands are actually down from what they have been. Uh, right now the highest density of grouse that we've been seeing is in our second uh, management district, which goes from Williston down to the South Dakota border along the Missouri River, and about 20 to 40 miles on either side of the river. Okay, let's move into a grouse species. Basically we just have them up in the northeastern part of North Dakota the rough grouse. Our rough grouse were down in the Turtle Mountains this year, so we have two populations of rough grouse, a population in the Turtle Mountains and then on the northeast corner in the Pemina Hills. Um, and they were down in the Turtle Mountains and then up in the Pemina Hills. And that population fluctuates quite a bit. We don't do a lot of survey work there because it's, it's a different habitat type in the forest, so it's harder to see them. Um, and also because we have fewer fewer of those in the state. So we don't spend a ton of resources there, but what we did do in the spring, we found fewer uh, in the Turtle Mountains and more in the Pemina Hills. Species that we're starting to hear more about are Hungarian partridge. How are they doing? Yeah, this year our Hungarian partridge numbers actually look good of all things. Our harvest for the last two years has been down, and that typically happens when our pheasant densities are lower. You get fewer hunters out chasing pheasants, and as partridge are, are usually harvested incidentally, uh, fewer hunters means fewer will be harvested, but the numbers are higher than they have been. Um, still not what they were in the late 80s and early 90s, but they are beginning to rebound and, and hunters who want to pursue partridge should be able to find them this year. Hunters can help you and your biologists out by participating in the wing envelope survey. Hunters can submit wings for us. They, any harvested bird, pheasant, uh, rough grouse, sharp-tailed grouse, or partridge, if they would clip the wing, some head feathers for sharp-tailed grouse, and then some tail feathers to help us identify the sex. Um, if hunters would send those in to us, it helps us to establish uh, juvenile to adult ratios to determine how well the reproduction was the previous year, as well as keeping track of how many hens to males are being harvested in a species like sharp-tailed grouse or partridge. And anybody can send those envelopes in. Anybody can send them in and they can get them online at, at the Game and Fish website. Also hunters who've submitted wings in the past, um, if they check that they want more wing envelopes, we send those, those individuals envelopes each year. Okay, and what do you use the data for? You've mentioned a little bit. Yep, we use the data to evaluate the juvenile to adult ratio in our harvested birds, which we assume is, is a random sample, and we can evaluate the reproduction from that year. What kind of information should hunters include in their envelopes when they send them in? Yeah, that's a good question because it's important that hunters report the county and the date that birds were harvested. We use the date to back calculate how, how old the chicks were and, and when their hatch date was to determine the peak hatch dates for each species in the state. And so if we get an envelope without the county where the bird was harvested or the date when it was harvested, we can't use that data. So. Okay, let's talk about two species that we don't have a season on, 
and we used to have a season on in North Dakota. One is the prairie chicken and the other is the sage grouse. Let's talk about sage grouse first. You guys are doing some work with sage grouse currently. Yep, right now North Dakota is kind of in the spotlight for sage grouse because we've been bringing sage grouse from Wyoming to southwestern North Dakota. There aren't very many examples of successful sage grouse translocations, unlike um, partridge and pheasants, for example, which were introduced here and brought here through translocations. Um, sage grouse are a little bit more finicky. They require really specific vegetation, which is big sagebrush. And we, we started to bring some up so people are watching to see what our results show. Okay, let's move into prairie chickens. We're, for prairie chickens, we've got two populations. One is just east of Grand Forks in Grand Forks County, and the other one is down by the Cheyenne National Grasslands. Uh, prairie chickens like tall grass prairies, and so that's where the remnant tall grass prairies remain in North Dakota. And we close the season, and we, we currently don't have enough prairie chickens for hunting, but we, we still are managing and watching those populations to see how they're doing. So overall, hunters should see sharp-tailed grouse out in the field. Yeah, if a hunter puts in a lot of time, but there definitely aren't as many as, as North Dakotans are accustomed to. Every non-resident that I talk to who comes here for the first time says they, they see more than they were expecting to see, so it depends a lot on expectations. A lot of good information, Jesse. Thank you. For more information on grouse and partridge hunting seasons in North Dakota, visit the Game and Fish website at gf.nd.gov. For Upland Game Biologist Jesse Kohler and the rest of the staff here at the Game and Fish Department, thanks for joining us for this week's Outdoors Online. We'll see you again next week.